been? It's been a wild time. It's been a while. It's, it's, it's been a while, and it's been a wild time. Well, talk about that a little bit. Talk about it a little bit. Oh, my. Um, coming home from Nigeria in mm -hmm. the midst of, mm -hmm. of uh, civil unrest and uh, the loss of lots of people's lives, uh, coming home to the U.S. church, it's pretty comfortable, mm -hmm. and trying to uh, step across boundaries. Easter Sunday was first Sunday back, and I'll have to tell you that it was one of the most disturbing Easter's I've ever had because I had one foot in Golgotha at the crucifixion and one foot at the empty tomb, and it was... Um, a very troubling Easter because it was hard to celebrate and be joyous when I kept looking out across the gathered body of the Nigerian church after they were told that another member had been abducted uh, or a district executive had been abducted or another group of houses had been burnt down and I could just see the absolute sadness and terror uh, in their eyes and that's for me, Easter had that imagery, and so, mm -hmm. you know, to see all the color and all the dancing around mm -hmm. was somehow a paradox that I almost couldn't, I couldn't bridge the gap. So it was a very troubling Easter. I get it. Intellectually and spiritually, I get it. Mm -hmm. But emotionally, I had a foot at Golgotha and a foot um, at the empty tomb. So even in the midst of all of this with the... You know, Facebook, social media has kind of exploded <laughs> with the Bring Back Our Girls. Oh, yeah. Where do you see resurrection mm. in this? Well, where I see resurrection in it is um, the response of, of the church in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Because there would be a, there is a great tendency, I think, for all of us. I mean, as, as Americans have responded to Bring Back Our Girls, there is one group of people that are saying, let's go get them. You know, mm -hmm. this is this mm -hmm. is an atrocity against our people, mm -hmm. and there are others who are saying, "Well, let's go um, and let's teach them about peace. Let let us show you them the way." And then the more reflective piece, and I, I think this is the resurrection, is that um, EYN leadership. When I asked him, "What what do you want the U.S. Church to do?" said, "We want you to go home, and we want you to call your people to prayer and fasting." Mm -hmm. And that means they want us to engage a spiritual discipline that they have absolute faith in. Mm -hmm. Because the church leadership believes from the bottom of their heart if the church is faithful, if all of us are faithful followers of Jesus, that lightness will overcome the darkness. And they want us to, that, that's like, here's the mission for you. Mm -hmm. You want to do something? engage this. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that absolute faith that um, no evil can sway their hearts from the love and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, mm -hmm. That's it. That's right. Yeah, that's it. I mean, what more do you need? Well, <laughs> you, you brought up a really great point, though, with, um, you know, after returning to America where we are comfortable, mm -hmm. we go to church we can go to church every Sunday, and it's never a, we're afraid to walk in. That's right. Um, we're, we're never faced with that level of fear. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I've, that I've been bringing with myself through this journey, uh, especially after um, this, this past year here at Bethany, is what can, what can churches do that creates spaces for intentional discernment mm -hmm. and how the Spirit's calling us to respond to situations like this in a way that live out the gospel, but still being being here, mm -hmm. and that's that's a tough. I think that's a tough question for a lot of us to really even to begin to understand. Is how do we respond in the Church of the Brethren in America to these to these these conflicts, these mm -hmm. horrors that are going on? Mm -hmm. What's what's God calling us to do? What's what's the church's response in this? You know, well, I think I think there are a couple thing, couple levels of it that we could talk about. Mm -hmm. One is is that we have we have to unpack what's been a colonial or an empire response um, to these huge events globally, and mm -hmm. and, it, and it started kind of with World War II. We mm -hmm. we saw the great devastation, and and I'm not being critical, but it's become part of who we are that we want to go do, and we 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 believe we have 
a solution that we can impose on another culture and other people. And, and it's not out of a vicious nature. It's, it's just, uh, it's almost an arrogance of our own that says, we've got, boy, do we have a solution for you and we're, we're going to take it. And, and um, that's, that's uh, clientelism, uh, not clientelism, that's colonialism, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And, and I think, first of all, we need to unpack that. And we have to step back and say, first of all, nobody, this, in this specific crisis with the Nigerians, the Nigerians have to find the solution mm -hmm. for their crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, they are highly educated people. They are devout Christians. And, and the Nigerian church, for example, the EYN, they, they really are working at this as how do we bridge the gap between, in the many divides. So it's Muslim, Christian, violent, peace. They're trying to find bridges and defining it because, as, as bridge building because Jesus calls them to love the Lord your God with heart, soul, mind, and strength and your neighbor as yourself. Who is my neighbor? And you know, as defined as defined by Jesus in that story, it's the Samaritan. Well, who's the Samaritan? So who is the Samaritan for the Nigerian church right now? Mm. And so here in the midst of all this, we're going, what can we do? They're asking the question, what are we going to do with all of the little boys who become teenagers as part of this violence with Boko Haram? When the, when the violence is over and they return home, who's going to care for their souls as they are deprogrammed and brought back into the culture. So they're talking about reconciling the relationship with the offender. Mm -hmm. To me, that is incredible Christian spirituality. And I think the it's model, the model, it's great faith. So the question for us in the United States is, who is the Samaritan in our narrative? Mm -hmm. And how are we praying for them? Is it in mass incarceration? I mean, we have, you know, how many millions of people imprisoned in the United States? Do we understand that um, that, that is part of a, a, a political system that has become a big business and is revenue producing? And it's, a, and it's also a place where we have indentured servanthood because they farm out the incarcerated to do menial tasks for people for pennies a day mm -hmm. and it's advantageous to keep them in prison and it's differentiated between the rich and the poor and their doing so who is our Samaritan and how are we praying for the returning citizen not the ex-convict mm. but the returning citizen because EYN is saying we're praying for the returning child, not the ex Boko Haram. So the question I have for the U.S. Church is, who, who are we praying for in a way that welcomes them back into our community? Or welcomes them into because they've never been apart? Um, how are we engaging the violence in our cities? How are we engaging the violence that our kids are having to face in public schools all across America? We have plenty to do here at home. Mm -hmm. And how do we engage in this um, spiritual art of prayer that is toward our Samaritan imagery? Mm -hmm. And I think EYN is asked, and they're saying we want you to pray and fast. Yes, it's about them, and they want us to accompany them. Mm -hmm. But they're also asking us to step up to the plate, too, within the context of our own culture to be peacemakers in our own land. It's, it's a big job. It's a big <laughs> job. And, you know, I find myself asking the question is, how, how can we engage even at the congregational level? What are we talking about? What does our scripture study look like? What, what, are, what are we praying for during Sunday morning worship? And how are we engaging yeah. at the local level? And what's God calling us to respond to in our own backyards? And that being such an empowering piece for American churches here um, to, to have 
to have a part in that mission of God among the people of God and, and that greater peace, that greater scope of peace that begins mm -hmm. just down the block from our Absolutely. church. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and so I, and that's one of the things we, we talk a lot about here is um, leadership in the denomination, creating that space that intentionally listens for the Spirit of God and yeah. where is God guiding us and recognizing that in the Church of the Brethren we have so many gifted spirit-filled people I mean we're, we're mm -hmm. a church that just we I mean even even the fact that we're talking about peace and that on my newsfeed is flooding with the bring back our girls and that you know there's all these prayer times going on is what can we do uh, together to to like you said love our neighbor love our neighbor as ourselves there you, go. you, you and named it yeah I, yeah, mean, I mean you use the word mm -hmm. it's together together Together, peacefully, yeah. simply. I've heard that. Yeah, there, there's a phrase that we kind of like. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there, it's been interesting because this week there was a blog out there where where one young adult said, "Oh my gosh!" In the midst of all the violence that we hear about in Nigeria, how can we come together? How can we justify the expense and the coming together for annual conference, national youth conference, when so many people are hurting? I have an answer for that. And, it, and again, it comes out in Nigerian context. We, um, Jay Whitmire and I left Abuja the day that the Chibuk girls were abducted. And so we heard about it at the airport waiting on our plane to leave. We heard about their abduction. Mm -hmm. We were there in Abuja the day the bomb blew up in the uh, transit station where the hundred and some odd people were killed and hundreds were injured and that was like four or five miles away from where we were staying and so we we really there was evidence of violence all around us so in the midst of all this crisis and all this stuff going on um, I get this text from from a young Nigerian student from KBC who I had the privilege to get to know and it was just one of those friendships that once we talked Every time we saw each other, we had something to say, and now we're Facebook friends, and we're texting and emailing, all this kind of stuff. And so he, he writes to me three days after leaving Nigeria, and he goes, oh, by the way, we're gathering at uh, the National Youth Conference of EYN, and we're going clear across the country for NYC. I wrote back and I said, really? <laughs> In the midst of all this? Mm. And his, his response was, why not? It's where hope is revealed when we are together in the presence of our God. I'll, I'll write to you when the event's over. So, you know, I'm kind of going, huh. After the event's over, he goes, we had a great event. There were lots of kids there. The largest group of youth that came were from my Maiduguri. My Maiduguri is in the very heart of Boko Haram territory. Our churches and our people have been horribly um, affected by the violence there. And yet, they said, being together as church was the most important thing they could do, including risk of life and limb, to get there. Because in the midst of that meeting comes new life and new hope. I think that this is precisely the time for us to meet at, at annual conference, for the body to come together to encourage each other, for us to worship and live and pray and sing and work with the word as our guide together. Because that's where the body of Christ is brought into its fullness. That's where we're to be. And the Nigerians would say, wow, go, be together. And how many of us are risking more than an automobile accident or an airplane accident on our way to annual conference mm -hmm. and not persecution. Mm -hmm. By golly, I'm going to be there because I believe at annual conference the, the word of our living God will be revealed more greatly to each of us and that's where it's happening. That's where, that's where God's shalom, that's where the peace of Christ comes into reality is when we're together. Amen.
So that's my response. <laughs> that's my response well, to the blog. Well, done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want an answer to the blog? Ask me. You I know? love it. I know. Yeah. I, I love it. And it's just that that strong faith. Mm-hmm. That strong faith. And, you know, it, it's, it, it raises... It raises so many questions within our American context again. Yeah. Is what what are we worried about? Like what what are our fears? What are our anxieties centered around? And I think it's far more, you know, it's it's the numbers. It's the it's the it's the state of the church in, in America. It's what does that look like? What does that mean for us? What's our role in that? And we need to just yeah. be together, be worshiping together. God. That's right. And yeah. I love that. Just I mean, back. Back off all the details, folks. And just let's be the body just, of Christ. Just together. praise God. And That's just right. Praise God. And uh, and not EYN in the middle of all this. Twelve hundred people came together uh, in Moby at the quarry um, um, headquarters of EYN, mm-hmm. and they sang and they worshipped God, and they carried out the business of the church, but they were together and they left encouraged in the midst of very difficult uh, situation. Mm-hmm. Well, by golly, what a witness. And so, brethren, we're coming together and we're going to sing praises to our God. And it will be good. Yes, it will be. <laughs> and I, I've, I've been amazed, too. I, I keep getting updates from my district and uh, from my home congregation about all the prayer time that's going mm-hmm. on. And you can feel that. Mm-hmm. You really can feel that. You know, I'm, I'm nine hours away from home right now, but even just in the conversation and uh, the stories being shared, I sense that togetherness. And, you know, that's one of the things that I love about the Church of the Brethren mm-hmm. is that together is our big word and relationships the other one. And mm-hmm. it's, it's all about that building a relationship. The, the young man you were talking about earlier, I mean, you know each other now. Yeah. To the point where you're writing, you're sharing stories, you're brothers in Christ, you know, and... We are. and and that's that's what it's all about is is listening to the stories, asking the questions, and being inspired by one another. Well, um, take it to the next step. I often will get a text prayer from him. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about you today, and my prayer for you is: mm-hmm. May the love of our God, may the presence of the Holy Spirit enrich your words to bring glory to the Lord our God. Mm-hmm. I mean, so here's this young man. Uh, in the midst of turmoil, saying, yeah, but you're doing a good thing, too, and you, you're in my prayer. And I write back and say, my heart's heavy for you today, and I'm thinking about you, and I pray that you're safe as you journey from quarry to wherever you're going, and I'll pray for your safety. He writes back, and he goes, well, I've already arrived, and I'm safe. I mean, so, so it's, it's this interaction that transcends space and time because of the resurrected Christ. Mm. That's awesome. Resurrection. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God. Amen. (laughs)